think it's got Yeah. yeah. Um, if this economy is operating above full employment, where would I put the LRAS? To the left, the right, or in the middle of this? Uh, to the left. To the left. So you're saying right there? Yes. Okay. All right. Riley, if the government does nothing as far as fiscal policy or it does nothing as far as monetary, monetary policy, what will happen in the square? That's what I have to say. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. SRAS should laugh like Riley said. Why? Because what I didn't hear. Wages increase. All right. All right. So most of you, when you did um, the FRQ, you got this part right, but a lot of you missed the wages increase part in your explanation. All right. Any questions on that? Okay. Right there. There it is. All right. Um, let us remember when the Holy Presence of God and then you call us up the Holy Spirit. Dear God, thank you for uh, getting everyone back. Um, let's pray to be focused and let's just push through these eight or so days. Um, for most of you, when the eight days now should be over. St. John the Baptist of the South, live Jesus in our hearts. Okay. All right. Um, you probably have got this in every class, but if you have an AM exam, they want you there at 750. You need um, for our exam, you got to take the FRQ and pen. Uh, the reason for that is when they pack them all up, they pack them so tight that sometimes the pencil like erases and they can't read them. So bring it number two pencil and a pen. Um, if you have um, a PM exam, they want you there at 1150. If you have a schedule that day where you go like four period, you have to be period, you have one, two, three, four, you ask me and I allow you to go to lunch or relax so you don't just go eight straight periods. All right? So that, that's how um, that would be. We're taking you to the auxiliary gym, except if you have special accommodations and um, I guess they tell you where. Um, May 5th is macro in the morning. May 6th is micro in the afternoon. Okay. Any questions on the task or any of it? Yes, sir. So, um, as you get deeper, you have to go to classes. What? You go to your classes every day. Yeah. It's not my work. All right. All right. I want to explain why. Like, so, in the grade book, you have like this um, multiple choice grade that was probably the 57, 52, 49. That, that, that's like the, the multiple choice curve. Okay. That's the only thing on that practice test that actually counted towards your grade. There's another thing that might say 50 4. That meant you got 50 out of 60 right, and the AP college board would estimate that you would have got a four. I think that's a low estimation. If you got 50 right on multiple choice, you need 22 to get a five out of 30. That's 70% to get a five. But anyhow, that's why I wrote that there. 
that did not affect your grade. Okay. I actually used 48 as the five on the multiple choice as my um, cutoff there. All right. The FRQ in um, the grade book was just done for completion. Because uh, I told you, you can use your notes. Some people used their notes, some people didn't. To put a grade in there, I thought it was kind of unfair. So I just marked it for completion. All right. But I also gave you, like, say this person got 42 multiple choice, right? That's 42 out of 60. They got 23 out of 30 on the FRQ for a total of 65. I think the cutoff was 63 for a four. So they would have gotten four. By the way, 40% of you lost the point by not labeling your grades. And I'm just going to say, like, so I think there's seven to 10 guys who can get 100 on an AP exam, which I think is a cool thing. Um, I don't even know if it's comparable if we got 100, but one guy got 89 out of 90, and the only thing he got wrong is he didn't label a grade. The only thing I say about labeling is it's not knowledge, it's just sloppiness. And it, you know, it really hurts if you need a four and you miss by a point. And we will never know, but like just make sure to get all those points. They're like to me, easy points. All right, any questions about the practice test, the FRQ, any of that stuff? Did you pass in your micro test? I also gave you, um, I gave you the answer to the effort, right? Yeah. Oh, I Did everyone get an F or just F or Q? Okay. I'd like you to do that by tomorrow. And can you do it on a separate piece of paper so I, I can read it? Um, yeah, yeah, I heard All right, guys, I, I'd like you to take this honestly. All right, because I'm more interested for you to see where you are, like what you remember, what you don't know, than what your grade would be on this. Okay. Yes, sir. So just to be clear, the whole test is like 60 multiple choice and then the FRQ that we did. Three FRQs, right? Yeah, but there were three on. Yeah. So that's like, that's the whole test. That's the test. Okay. What'd you get? On this? On the FRQ. 27. Okay. So you, I'm guessing you got a five. On the practice, right? Yeah. Yeah. That, and that's it. And if you took, and, and I'm not saying this, if you took the FRQ without using your notes, but I said you could. That's a very, that's a really good sign. Do you know what I mean? Because 27, normally, like I think if you get like 50, you can get like 22 or better to get a five. All right, um, we've got eight days. Um, all I'm gonna say is if you don't like where you are, just use these eight days wisely 
let's come in before and after school. I'm here before and after school. Uh, I went over graphs this morning with some guys and they forgot a lot. And that's normal. So if you come in, we could really brush up. I'm, before and after school, I'm just going over graphs. At night, I'm going over old AP exams and picking hard questions so we can practice them. All right. I'll do that 7.30 every night to the AP exam. Tonight, yesterday was, is it all micro? Today is going to be micro and macro. I also recorded yesterday's and I sent it out. All right. I am a firm believer you can still get whatever grade you want. And you know, someone asked me in my last class, well, I need a five if I go here. Here's another thing I'm going to tell you. 30% of the kids who go to college and cover it all end up at a different school. Um, so just do the best you can. You know, who knows what you're supposed to do. Okay, and then I toss about the FOQ. The last thing I'd say is if you're struggling in this class, I think this test is the most important for you. And the reason why is this is not going to be a hard question of taking your career. And it will teach you. <laughs> it'll teach you what you need to overcome. Because there'll be times that most of us will need a good grade on their final to overcome some other bad grades in the whole class. So if you can figure out how to do well on the AP exam, it's like a college final, then you'll go into college with a lot more confidence. So I think it's good. My sixth, first period of class, there was some college professor observing me. Um, hopefully, he offered me a job so I can make more money. Um, would I leave, Seth? Uh, I mean, honestly, I feel like you could. No. You know, I mean, wow. Wow, Seth. Wow. Not Seth's uh, fault. Uh, he's just smart. He would leave for more money. Yeah. Um, but anyhow, I asked her. Is there a college professor in your school who would be like before or after school and at night helping kids? And she said, absolutely not. So she said, take advantage. And I said, you should. Your parents pay a ton of money. Work me to death. You know, they, they. All right, here we go. Um, this is on your sheet. It's the first question. If the current account is zero in the United States, what will the impact of an increase on real income in the United States be on the current account? And that's the U.S. So everything on the top is the U.S. And then you're drawing the bond chance. Okay. Yeah. 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 I go with E and G. Like for the foreign exchange, like for B e for like what price would be. Okay. But if they don't give you anything and you went D and Q, as long as it's labeled, I don't think they could argue. So what does E stand for? The exchange. Okay. Uh, 
right. Charles, let me ask you first. If real income increases in the United States, will Americans have more money to spend? Will they buy foreign goods? If that is true, what's going to happen to debt exports? With some confidence? Make it a decrease. If net exports decrease, what's going to happen to the current account? All right. If the current account's in deficit, which is correct, what's going to happen to the financial account? It's a surplus, right? Because they have these, these at equals zero. Okay? All right. So you've got the United States has a deficit. That's correct. Any questions on that? All right. Now, Max, I'm going to draw uh, the foreign exchange for the euro. And Nick asked me before, I, I use E and Q. Um, but if it's the euro, the euro's underneath. That's the dollar. That's by Q of Europe. All right. Max, oh, by the way, they give you a point if you label this red. A lot of you forgot your E's and Q's, but that's not giving you away. Max, what's going to shift in which direction here? All right. So U.S. citizens wanting to buy foreign goods need euros. So you say the demand for euros is going to increase getting us here, right? Is that what you wanted? Okay. Seth, is the euro appreciating or depreciating? If the euro appreciates, Drew, what has to happen to the US dollar? Now, Mr. Paul, after all this has happened, what's going to happen to net exports in the United States? They would increase, right? Because US goods are here cheaper because the dollar is depreciating. Any questions on any of that? You're saying that exports will eventually increase. In the short run, they will have decreased, right? Up here. Up here. Yeah. Right, yeah. And that's why I said after all this happens. Yeah. So, what they will commonly do on the test is say, referring to C, so you know that. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Whatever is for the European. Yeah, but wouldn't that mean that you can get more Europe or not? I don't know. That's really great. I, no, yeah, I, I hate I know what you're going through. Yeah, it's really good. It doesn't, doesn't make sense to me, but I just really yeah. on the bottom. Why do exports increase Okay. After this, the Euro is appreciated making their goods seem more expensive. Okay. Yeah, sure. Net investment is money you make on foreign investments. So I own a Chick-fil-A in Japan and I make 20,000 a year. That's net investment. Net transfers is you send your grandmother a Poland some money. Or the United States sends countries foreign aid. It's like money leaving the country and not getting anything back. Is that exports in the US will increase? After, after this. Yeah. So if this was in terms of surplus in the US, then they would have a surplus. What do you mean? After this? Yeah. Yeah, because net exports would now go up. I mean, yes. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Since they were initially in a deficit, if the net exports. Yeah, they. 
they would have to, they would probably say with the current account increase, decrease, or stay the same. Because you don't know how much it increased from the And that's why even in their original question, they saw that you had zero. So you know if it you know, went to a deficit. Okay. Anything else? Okay, what do we got next? All right, I put this, I think, on your point on notes. Take a minute or two, jot down what you remember. But do you know the shift is in the production possibility start? You can now go? I almost kicked some out of class today. Uh, say, say it takes life. Can't be not in Dr. Newt is on the line. You can't pull it. <laughs> That's why you can't pull it. <laughs> All right. Anything up here you don't remember? I didn't hear you. All right. Positive is fact. Okay. Uh, a fact might be you scored 52 out of 60 on your multiple choice. The normative might be, um, yeah, like you studied or you just had an amazing teacher. I'll look for the second one. So, scarcity. I know like everything is technically scarce, but like. So that's unlimited wants. And limited resources. Okay. And you're right. Everything there is scarce. Now they like to compare scarcity and shortage. Shortage is temporary. Like you might go and there's no corn at the grocery store. That's a shortage. There's a scarcity of corn all the time. Okay. There's not unlimited corn. Anything else? Walt's shaking his head. He's saying I should go on. All right. Boards. Yeah. Let's get some boards. Please don't see all over. Every day is Friday. What the heck? I don't know. We just don't realize like these markers come from my sense. All right. First question. The additional satisfaction we see from consuming an additional unit of goods is born. You have 30 seconds. Twenty seconds. I wonder what the craft bird is setting. All right, boards, please. 
Got a lot of alphas, a lot of alphas, all A's. And a broccoli for drip. All right, now, Joe, what is it called when I eat a donut? When I eat my second donut, third donut, fourth donut, what's going to happen? And what do we call that? The law of Returns is more productive. Okay. All right, good job. Next up, Satis utility and satisfaction. All right, um, I just want to know who has the comparative advantage of core. Give you a minute. Yeah. It's tricky. I do. Oh, the way that it's Ready, boys? I've got uh, uh, Brazil, Brazil. Got a lot of Brazils, Brazil, Spain. Spain, Spain. All right. All right. What? Compared. Okay. All right. Patrick, first, guys, please. First thing, input or output? Input. Okay. Would you move your seat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. It was the enthusiasm. All right. It's an input problem. If it's an input, what is the formula? Other under. So if I'm looking for the coin for Brazil, the other is shoes. It's two over eight. That's a quarter. Spain, the other is shoes. That's 12. This is the third. Uh, a quarter is smaller. So Brazil is the comparative advantage in form. Now, if any of you are fraction challenged like me, what I would do then is eight over two is four, 12 over four is three. I know they have the comparative advantage in shoes, so therefore Brazil has to have it in um, form. Okay, this is the theorem. All right. The key, there were two hard things. One, to realize it's an input, and second, I, it's lined up different than most. Who has the absolute advantage in coin? Brazil. Because it's better to make a bushel of corn in two hours than four. It's an input question. So the comparative advantage in both input and output, we're always looking at the smaller number. This is both a micro and macro question. Okay, so it could be on both the same. Okay, next, next up. All right, give you forty-five seconds. As a factor of production, as a factor of production, capital refers to
Okay. What do we got? I've got E's, 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 E's. All right. All E's. Jordan. Jordan W. If capital has increased more tools and machines, will LRAS shift right left to stay the same? It's going to shift right because in that capital investment leads to long term economic growth, shifting LRAS to the right. Good job. Oh, another one. Let's just do comparative advantage in lumber. What do we got? We've got Estonia, Estonia, Estonia. Estonia, Estonia. Estonia, Estonia. All right. Patrick, guys, please input or output question. So it's it's other lumber, right? So if we're going to lumber, the other is still from at 420, right? Where you where are you getting confused from this? Uh, I don't know. I just try to think if you can make that many stuff in that many hours. Don't think about it. Just think about the math. And... Yeah. Think about the opportunity. Because, like, couldn't they create? Because you both make cell phones at the same amount of time. So if they can make lumber in four hours, then they're obviously going to do it because the other one makes it in five hours. So why do they... Okay. 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 We good? Yeah. All right. A linear production possibilities curve indicates which of the following. All right, what do we got? We got some A's. Is that an A's back there? Oh, no. That is just so fancy. All right. I understand. What's that? I got these wrong boards all over the place. Colin, I understand that A, a linear is constant. Could you explain to me why? What makes constant opportunity for us to occur? Okay. Well, no, that, yeah, that's true, but why does that occur? Resources are easily adapted. Now, well, if it's bowed out, what kind of opportunity for us is? Increasing and that's resources are not easily adapted. Okay. All right. Of the feasible, of the feasible points, which one will lead to the most economic growth? What 
What do we got? All right. I need to be up. Will. Because Henry was making this argument too. Do you feel that J is making more capital goods than N? Yeah. 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 I think because of its inefficiency, it might not. Um, so the answer that they put down is N. What I, what I want to do is, I told Henry I'd go check it. And I want to see is this an AP question or a question I took from another reference, which means maybe this J is not in the right spot. So specifically on the goods, the capital goods I mean, yeah, I would say more capital goods you make to better your economic growth is, but it would be better to be making more capital and consumer. And I think that's where they would go with that over J. But I'm going to check that. Okay. I want to check that to make sure. All right. And time has expired for the day. I will see you guys tomorrow. I remember the I input other under output other over. Oh yeah, wait, wait is this when is it? Is this too like tomorrow? F one two G tomorrow. I put it on the um, yeah yeah. I got a compromise on one of these I already gave up on two of my exams, even though I'm paying for them. You're not getting up on these. I want to get a good grade.